Welcome to Glassworld's long crack repair training video. So we're going to start with a few kind of common questions that, that you might run into when determining uh, what types of long cracks can be repaired. First let's talk about uh, what length of long crack can be properly repaired. The first thing we could, we could address there is the ROLAG standard, which is important to note that is a US only standard, and that standard specifies 14 inches as the maximum long crack length. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. However, it is also important to note that that is not law, that is just a local standard within the US market. In other markets, uh, it's quite common to do long cracks that extend far beyond those 14 inches. Now, another question, common question is uh, things you want to check before starting a long crack. Probably one of the first things you want to look at is to see whether the crack uh, might have a buildup of debris inside or dirt inside the crack, which of course is going to affect the final, um, final, final look of the crack once it's finished, once it's been fully repaired and could possibly affect, affect the adhesion as well. So that's an important thing to identify from the start and communicate to the customer so they're aware of the fact that there's a buildup of debris in the brick. Now let's also talk about what sort of long crack repairs you would want to avoid repairing, because certainly there are certain unrepairable types of damage out there that you might run into. So probably one of the most common is that, as you can see with this crack we've got here, we've got legs radiating in two different directions. Now per the ROLAG standard, if there are more than three uh, legs radiating, that, that long crack would be unrepairable at that point. So up to three legs uh, it should be repairable in, in, in most, uh, most windshields. If it goes beyond that though, it's typically uh, a candidate for replacement at that point. Now another thing to factor in is uh, edge cracks. If we were to have an edge, a, a, a crack right along the edge of the windshield, there's a couple of criteria we'd want to pay attention to. Number one, if there's an impact point, so a rock hit the edge of the windshield and then radiated to the edge and floated out into the middle of the windshield, that would be repairable. However, if the crack radiated to the edge and then the other crack radiated up to another edge, then it would be unrepairable at that point in time because the structural integrity of the windshield is potentially compromised by the crack reaching each edge of the windshield. So that's definitely something you would want to, to look at. The other thing that would be unrepairable is what we call stress cracks. And how do you identify a stress crack? Well, a stress crack basically is a crack that radiates from an edge and does not have an impact point. So what causes that crack? Well, it's likely flexing or uh, a, a, a installation of the windshield that was done incorrectly. Uh, so by repairing it, we're really not solving the problem. That stress is gonna continue to be there, and that's why it is something we would avoid repairing uh, if at all possible. So that pretty much covers uh, most of the scenarios where we would avoid repairing a long crack. So let's talk briefly about how to identify a long crack and, and what makes up a long crack. As you can see here, we've got a long crack, um, and this long crack, you can feel the edge of the long crack with a razor blade. Uh, just by scraping it along the surface. That tells us that crack is surface. So your typical impact point, your typical break uh, that's caused by a rock is essentially a subsurface break, right? The impact point is the top and the inside is essentially a cone of like an air pocket that's sealed off from the surface. Uh, whereas when, once the crack extends, essentially, you know, surface tension gets the best of that, of that crack and it comes to the surface. So now we've got basically uh, a gap on the, all, all along the surface of the glass that needs to be filled. So when we have a surface crack now, we have to use a different technique in order to cause that surface crack to finish at a subsurface point. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how much resin we put in here, the, the crack will continue to spread. So we'll get into that in the next section where we'll uh, drill and pop a bullseye at the end of each of the cracks in order to force them subsurface. So let's talk a little bit about what can cause a long crack. Um, certainly once a break it is produced on the glass, or you know, rock hits the glass, and in particular with star breaks and combination breaks where there's legs radiating off of them. The flexing of the windshield can certainly cause that. Bumps in the road can cause it. Um, drastic temperature changes where you get expansion and contraction of the glass can naturally cause the stress on the glass to cause a crack to spread out of that initial impact point. Uh, the other thing that can cause that is even something as simple as on a cold day, blasting your, uh, your defrost on with a ton of hot air uh, can cause that kind of immediate expansion and contraction and causing stress to the glass, which can cause the cracks to spread. But for you as a technician, that means opportunity. So you might also ask, which resin should I choose for doing long crack repair? Uh, glass welder has a variety of resins that can be used for long crack repair. They all come with a, uh, a gray tint to them that is specifically 
designed for long cracks to absorb as much light refraction and reflection as possible. And there are three options for you. You have crack weld 1000, crack weld 2000, and 2010 gray. So let's just talk briefly about when you would use those. We'll start with the thinnest of the three. The 2010 gray is great for a small long crack, you might say. Uh, four to six inches, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, generally, the 2010 gray is gonna be your best bet there, especially in a moderate climate. Now, the, the Crack Weld 1000 is probably the best all around crack resin. It has a really good flowing properties, but it also has great adhesion and flexibility and can withstand, especially in a little bit longer crack, uh, say around 14 inches or even beyond that. And then the Crack Weld 2000. So Crack Weld 2000 would be a great option in a very long crack that maybe exceeds 14 inches um, or in markets where you, know, you have large temperature swings, where during the day it's 85 degrees and at night it's you know, 20 degrees. Uh, because of those large temperature swings cause a lot of expansion and contraction. So the thicker resin, while it may take a little longer to fill during the repair process, is important to use to get a long lasting uh, adhesion and a long lasting uh, crack repair. So now we're gonna show you how to repair a long crack that has more than one leg radiating. Once again, per the Rolag standard, we can repair up to a long crack that has up to three legs radiating. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by drilling our holes at both end, ends and popping our bullseye. So we're gonna start right up here at the top. Again, about a quarter to an eighth of an inch past the end. Again, trying to go about halfway through the first layer. So if you hold the drill bit in too long, it'll kind of burn out your bits. Um, but by doing this, we keep them a little bit more cool. And again, we don't want to go too deep because if we go too deep, then we'll go all the way to the PVB. And then we'll take our replaceable tip probe, give it a little tap. And if it doesn't open up right away, we'll go a little bit deeper. You would never want to hit it very hard because that could cause the crack to spread. There we go, so now we're just gonna pressure the leg to connect to the bullseye. And then we're just gonna repeat that same step on the other end. Um, and just make sure we come about a quarter to an eighth of an inch past the end of that leg. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got the drills, um, We've got the holes drilled out and we've got the bullseyes made and we've connected the legs. We're gonna go ahead and install our crack expanders. So we're gonna put one crack expander about a couple of inches from the initial impact point on both sides. And it's a good idea to have a little bit of suction cup sealant lubricant on there. Again, we don't need much pressure. So just make sure they're adhered behind. We don't need a lot of pressure, so we're just tightening the, the, the screw down to open the crack up slightly. But again, we don't need it to be pressing on it real hard, just a slight amount of pressure. Using multiple crack expanders will help you to keep the whole leg nice and stable, nice and open, and then you don't have to be moving in and out of the vehicle. Now we're gonna set up our uh, tripod with the corner edge extension, so again, as we've shown in, in previous videos, that just basically snaps in, the teeth line up, clicks into place. We're gonna wanna make sure we have some suction cup sealant on the back of these suction cups, because this injector is actually gonna slide along the, the, uh, the glass. Back up the screw here so we've got plenty of space to install it, and we're just gonna put it on the glass, kind of pressure down slightly, and move it back and forth to create the path that we're gonna operate on. And then we'll start at that initial impact point. And then give ourselves that downward angle that we need in order to install the injector, okay? So now we're gonna install the mirror. Clean our impact point. So since we've got a long crack here that's pretty decent in size, we're gonna use about 12 to 14 drops of Crackwell 1000 resin. So just 
going to load that into the nose of our injector. Install our white seal. Bring the resin up to the, up to the bottom surface of the seal. install the injector into the stand. And again, we can kind of lift on the stand a little bit if we need a little extra pressure. We can also adjust our leveling screw, like so. Pull just a quick little vacuum for a few seconds. Again, we don't need much vacuum because the crack is already open. And then start injecting resin. Second little vacuum. Inject again. Remove the mirror and use the cork if we want. So once again, keep in mind that if you have more than one crack expander, you can stabilize the entire area and allow yourself to continue to move forward without having to go inside the vehicle repeated, uh, on repeated occasions. It also prevents uh, different areas of the crack from opening and closing and therefore risking getting air reintroduced uh, because it's essentially stabilizing the entire crack in one state, kind of an expanded state. So now meanwhile, while this is filling and we're gonna start running this upward, we can set up a second injector down here and work towards the center, if you have a second injector. If not, then you would just start with one leg, finish it out, and then uh, do, do the same thing with the other leg. But since we do have another injector, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and do a similar, take a similar approach. <clears throat> Back off the pressure. Load our injector with resin. Bring the resin up to the surface. Lower surface of the inside of the seal. We'll start it right over this little bullseye. Get a little bit of downward pressure. And a little quick vacuum, and then start to inject resin. So now we're working in both directions. So now our initial break should be pretty well filled. So now we're gonna go ahead and slide our injector upwards. So here we go, we're gonna move it along the resin until the point where the resin has stopped flowing, which is right about there. And you see the resin will flow pretty quickly. There it goes as I move forward. It's continuing to flow. And I'm adjusting, adding a little more resin as I go. At this point, I've pre-cut my film tabs. So, again, we're gonna use Crackwell 2000 resin on the top to make sure that we seal that off well as we go. So we don't want the air to get back in the crack. And then we just continue just to move it along adjusting a little bit of resin pressure. You see it's moving quite well. And every crack is different. Some fill real easily. Others are more tight and they might take a little longer to fill, but this one's filling nice and quick. So we're gonna go ahead and lay a second film tab down. So, continue moving forward. We can slide that film tab up. Just want to make sure that the entire crack is sealed off with Crackle 2000 resin. Continue forward. You know, with long crack repair, adhesion is everything. Because we're dealing with surface cracks and because a surface crack is susceptible to expansion and contraction, uh, the purpose of a long crack repair is to provide a long-term repair. Um, so while a thinner resin may fill the crack more quickly, in many climates, a thinner resin will uh, not resist the temperature swings that, uh, that a long crack uh, might experience. 
almost to the end there. Now we're gonna come back down here. Since we're almost complete up there, and we're gonna continue the same process over here. And if you lose a little bit of resin, no big deal. It's part of the process. Bring it forward and then let the resin flow there as well. Again, sliding it forward. So once we see the resin flow about a quarter of an inch past the crack, then that's when we're gonna slide it forward. We're gonna go back up here, move on to our bullseye. Make sure it's sealed up well. Go ahead and inject a little bit more resin into that bullseye up at the top. Um, we're not gonna pull a vacuum here because we don't wanna pull the resin out of the crack. So we're just gonna let the resin flow into the bullseye. So the crack, the upper crack is pretty well filled already. The lower crack still has a little ways to go. So we're gonna come back here, continue to slide it up. And remember that you can always adjust the pressure of the injector. So if you notice the injector's pressing too hard or not hard enough, you can adjust the set screw on the back or the, the, the leveling screw on the back to reduce or increase that amount of pressure. With a long crack, it's important that the injector not be over pressuring from the outside because we want to keep the crack open as we operate. So you don't want too much downward pressure on the glass. So once we reach this point, we want to make sure that we've got the leg completely filled um, with resin. That crack is completely filled with resin. And then we're going to back off the pressure slightly so that we can slide the injector off and replace it with a film tab. Slide it to the side here. Drop our resin right over the surface. Like so. Okay, so crack is the bottom crack is now filled. The upper crack should be filled. I'm gonna check the bullseye from the inside. So again, this would be a good time to, to look at all of your film tabs and make sure that all of them have plenty of resin underneath them. There's no voids, there's no areas where there's an air pocket that is uh, open before we go ahead and, and start the curing process. So what we're looking for is, if you just see under one of the film tabs a gap um, where the resin may not be present, that may be important to put a little more resin in there before you finish. So now we're gonna reduce some of the pressure of the injector and just kind of slide it off to the side. We're gonna lay one last film tab up at the top here over our bullseye. Making sure it's good and sealed off. So again, one last time, we're gonna check and make sure all of the crack is sealed off. It's got plenty of resin. Now it's very important to um, reduce the pressure now of our, of our crack expanders before curing so the crack can close back up, but we want to do that very slowly. We don't want to do that all at once. So we're just gonna just take a little bit of pressure off of each of them, little by little, nice and slowly until they've released from the glass. And that will allow the glass to kind of close back up and the resin to fill. Okay, now the resin release is there. Let it sit for about 10 seconds. Meanwhile, we're gonna set our curing light up. So with the cure-all light, once again, we can cover about six to eight inches. So we're gonna have to move this twice. We'll have it once up here and then we'll move it down. Since this is probably about a 10 inch to 12 inch crack there for about a minute. Now you can use one of the other curing lights as well, but the cure-all will cover the longest area. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the crack expanders. They're not pressuring the glass at all, so we might as well go ahead and remove them. So now we're gonna move this down once more. Now each section you want the cure-all to sit for at least one minute. One to two minutes uh, is pretty much the minimum amount of time to get a proper cure with the flash curing LED technology. So we are almost ready to scrape this off, check our impact points, see if we need to do any pit filling, and then clean the glass. Okay, now we're gonna remove our film tabs. And again, we wanna make sure that each of these is, is fully cured. You know, so if we don't hear a clicking sound or if we feel that it's wet at all, now would be the time to spend a little more time curing. But in this case, they sound like they're all fully cured. And again, we can just kind of scrape this off. So we can use some pit filler if we want in one of these, in our little drill holes. So we can put a little bit of pit polish on each of our pits. Inside. 
and out. So we had a crack from here to here, and from here to here. So as you can see, the crack is completely filled. There's no air in it. It may be visible slightly from one angle. Probably what's most visible is the little impact points from the drill holes. But we've got all the air out. It's completely filled with a nice gray resin that's, that's got good adhesion and that will help to hide that crack. Mm -hmm.